everyone's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing it's stupid. Yeah. That's what I was. I was that fish trying to trying to climb a tree, not realizing I belong in the water. And when mm -hmm. I did some of these assessments, it's like, here's the water. Because so many things are in our subconscious. So mm -hmm. many things we're unaware of. Even our strengths are subconscious. We know that, yeah, I could do that. Because when people tell you, oh my God, you're so good at this. And you're like, meh. Yeah, you take it for granted. That's you what take I it for granted. It's like, because it's easy for you. Because it's natural. It's easy. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, eh. Everyone, and welcome to another episode of Chatting with the Experts with me, Ola Okone, the host. Every week I bring you an episode in which I showcase women from Africa and the Caribbean who either live abroad or continue to live in the Caribbean and Africa. And what we do is at the end of the show, we ensure that you've learned something. So it's to empower, educate, and inspire women globally. Well, today is no exception to that. And I'm going to be talking with an amazing woman. And we'll be talking about approaching your vision with confidence. We'll talk about defining vision. We talk about reaching our goals by unleashing the superpowers in our minds. And we talk about setting up success and even more because it's early in the year, and we know most of us start off the new year with many goals. But come spring, things have definitely changed from, and typically our goals change between the 1st of January and sometimes by the end of January. So today my guest is Alicia Curry, and she is going to be talking to you about how to change that. With that, I want to welcome Alicia to Chatting with the Experts. Well, thank you so much, Paula, for inviting me to come back into your space in front of your tribe. Uh, it's always an honor and a pleasure to, to hang with you. And I always, always enjoy talking with you. There's no exception. <laughs> thank you. So we talked about vision. Tell us, tell, well, before we go on to that, tell us a bit about yourself. Oh, sure. So my name is Alicia Curry. I am the founder and CEO of Audacious Concepts, Inc. and Red Carpet CEO. Uh, with Audacious Concepts, Inc., we focus on the corporate market space where we help leaders and teams work better together by assessing strengths of the individual and looking at the strengths of the team and how they can really work together. We reduce friction, we reduce conflict by understanding these different parts of the mind uh, and helping our clients understand each other well so that you work in your zone of genius and not against your grain. So that's really what we do on that side. And then I'm a podcast producer and host, web show producer and host as well on the red carpet CEO side. And we help sometimes help people with their personal brand when needed. So that's that's what we do. That's why I say she's multi-talented. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we're talking I keep a about... lot of plates spinning. <laughs> say that again? I keep a lot of plates spinning. That's why you're good. And that's why, as I mentioned earlier, I enjoy our conversations. Always do. So what are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're talking about vision with confidence, like having a having confidence to actually complete the vision that you have. Because mm. sometimes we have a vision, we have a goal, um, and it could be five years, 10 years down the road, or it could be just for this year. And what I want to share with you is how can you get to that goal, conf goal confidently by applying your superpowers like what are your innate strengths that you can lean upon to help you get to the finish line of that goal and it's not like Paula said in the intro by the end of January things have gone you know to the wayside yeah goals everything your your resolutions your commitments everything because 
they weren't sustainable for you because they didn't align with your strengths. Mm. All right. So, I mean, if I set a goal, how, so we talk about in, uh, innate strengths. Let's yes. expand about on that. Is it like self confidence? I mean, is that no uh, innate strengths are are different. Um, they're they're what you were born with. So our brain is wired for certain things. The, the way that I do things and the way that you do things are different based on how our brains were wired to, to accomplish. So this is not about your belief system. This is not about your mindset. This is not about your subconscious programming. This is actually how we were wired from birth for success. And we do different, different assessment to help uncover or uh, <laughs> expose those strengths. So sometimes we we have this kind of inkling, we have this feeling about our strengths. We kind of think we know what we're good at, quote unquote, what we're good at. But giving language to that, giving um, like what that really means, what what that encompasses, what that that strength allows you to do is not always a conscious uh, revelation to us. You know, like some people, their natural talent, they may have a natural talent for singing. And we could see that, we can hear that. That's, that's like, we could see that. But there are some strengths that we have that are innate to us like that talent, but we can't really recognize it as a strength. And many times we've been told it's actually a weakness and we try to suppress it when it is actually a strength of ours. Okay, so how do we go about, I mean, how do you go about doing that? Um, uh, the uncovering them and finding out what your strength is. So yeah. let me, first, let me tell you a story. And one of the, the things that I am most passionate about, because I'll tell you one of my passions, one of my most, I'm most passionate about is helping people grow their confidence because I believe everybody should have some audacious confidence within them. Yep. You know, that unshakable belief in themselves that's so bold and so brave that they, they will step out even despite fear, past fear, past failures, um, and go after their dreams. So when we're looking at your strengths, I'll tell you a story about my strength and how I was able to re, not just reimagine it, but, but reframe it from a weakness because my whole life I've been told that's not how I should be. That's not the way it should be. So one of my strengths is in seeing the big picture. Like I can, I, I know where I'm going. I could see the big picture. I can see it down the road how, where I need to be. Something that is not a strength of mine is focusing on the details of that. So I could see the big picture. And in that vision for the big picture that I have, that I'm, I'm really good at uh, being that, that visionary and seeing the big picture is that I was called a daydreamer. I was called, I was told that I was uh, sort of, that I, I couldn't concentrate on one thing. Like you need to do one thing. Why can't you just sit down and do the one thing? No, because I see the world in a bigger way. So I see like all these different things that, that need to be done to get to where I want to go. So I'm not going to focus on one thing. Hence, I have two businesses, right? I can see all these different pieces and so they say I have bright, shiny object syndrome. Um, I can never finish anything. I'm a great starter, but I can never finish because my strength is in the starting. My strength is to initiate things and get it going because I see where it's going down the road and then move to the next thing and have people around me that can fill in and start working on the details of that plan. 
but I didn't understand that. And I didn't know that for a long, long time. So I was frustrating myself trying to be what everybody says I should be, which is you got to pay attention to the details and you got to, you got to do it this way. And, and you can only have success doing it this way. And so that really frustrated me. And it, it didn't just frustrate me. It created stress within my brain that I didn't even know was happening. Now, when I started working with assessment, so I'm I'm certified in, in two different assessment tools, Colby, which is a cognitive assessment, and uh, an affective assessment, which is in predictive index, which I use for work. But when I did it myself, it was like the heavens opened, you know, the, the clouds parted, angels sang. It's like, no, this is what you're, this is who you are. Stop fighting it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Albert Einstein has one of my favorite quotes by Albert Einstein is everyone's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its entire life believing it's stupid. Yeah. That's what I was. I was that fish trying to, trying to climb a tree, not realizing I belong in the water. And when mm -hmm. I did some of these assessments, it's like, here's the water, jump in. So, uh -huh. yeah, so that's how we can take something that you're frustrated, trying so hard to do that's really burning you out and help you understand how you're naturally wired, instinctively wired, and then let's build upon that and lean into those strengths instead of fighting against it. I love that. So you mentioned two assessments, um, the Kobe and- Kobe, the other one predictive index Colby mm -hmm. and predictive index so mm -hmm. we have three different parts of our mind we have the cognitive which most people have heard about you know you get iq tested in your cognitive mind that's in in the prefrontal cortex so you have your cognitive mind that's your knowledge your skills your um thinking how you think mm -hmm. think to problem solve and then we have the affective mind which is the in the limbic part of the brain and that is our personality people say that that's our feelings that's what we like or don't like our preferences our motivations so that's what what most people see and when they do assessments a lot of them are affective assessments it's it's measuring our our personality and and whether our personality gets along with another personality and then there's the cognitive part of the mind, which is also in that executive function, like the, the cognitive, but it is a, it's a different part of the mind that really measures your instinct for taking action. How do you do things naturally that the way your brain was wired for success? So for instance, like I said earlier, my brain is wired to jump in and start something. Let's get it going. Someone else's brain might be wired with, well, let's first get all the information that we can get from this. Let's dig into the details of this before we actually take action. Someone else might, their brain might be wired to say, you know what? We need to build a plan. We need a plan before we take action. We can't just jump in and take action. Let's build a plan. And someone else's brain might be, I need a working prototype. I need to actually see how this is going to work before we, we decide to do it on a larger scale. So our brains are wired very differently for success. And if we don't understand each other's wiring, then I'm expecting you to do things the way I want you to do it. And I'm frustrating you. And that's how conflict starts happening because I expect you to do it my way without any conscious um, real conscious thought about, well, maybe you don't do things, your, I don't do things your way and I have my own way of doing things. And so that's, that's kind of the different assessments. So predictive index kind of jumps into that cognitive and, and affective side and Colby does the cognitive side. It's um, awesome. So how, so now, yes. So now, now coming to defining, like we talked about goals and these tests, how do we go about like defining our goals and our visions using these systems? Oh, well, <laughs> so first of all, 
um, what what I was doing at the beginning, the end of last year, because this is the first time it kind of dawned on me. Mm -hmm. I'm the idea girl, right? It kind of dawned on me as I was going back and I was like, what was successful in 2023 for me? What was really successful last year? And how am I planning out my year for 2024 to have even more success? Mm -hmm. And when I looked back at the things that I was doing that really brought success to me, it was within those strengths. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, maybe we can help people align their vision to their strengths instead of here's my vision this is what I want to do and then fight their way to get there and sometimes that's why we give up halfway through or even by the end of January give up because it just seems like such a burden because we haven't understood yet our role in the vision what is what is it that we need and what is it that we need to get support around to help us get to that next level within our vision and we try to do it all, all on our own. So that's, that's kind of how to look at aligning your vision to your strengths. What, what do you want to accomplish? What is that big vision that you have? What is, and what is the why behind that big vision? Like, why do you want to accomplish that vision? What is your reason for it? And then once we do that, then we can start, you know, looking backtracking and seeing, okay, here you are, this is your vision here. What strengths do you bring to the table? And then where can we now look for support so that you're actually proactively looking for how to continue to get your vision down the road instead of holding it all on your own and then getting frustrated and letting it go. So I know that's, that's great. But I know before we came on camera, we talked about vision, but you gave, it was an acronym for something. Yes, I, I have an it. acronym for vision. Yes, <laughs> yes. because I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm working on helping entrepreneurs and other individuals, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're working in a company, I, 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 I feel so passionate about helping them connect the two. Now that I've connected the two for myself, I'm like, Yes, this is what I need to do. Help you connect the two. So the, the acronym for vision is values, instincts, strengths, innovation, operation. Like how do you operate? And then how do you nurture that vision to the end? Hmm. Like I said, I'm the person who gets everything started. I'm a, I'm a, I get it started. But that nurture piece to the end, that's what was always missing for me. How do I actually nurture that vision to the end? Mm -hmm. So that's um, that was the acronym that that I I felt would would help support visionaries and, and people who have a lot of dreams take their vision from where it is all the way to the end of the road and take action on it. And I have an acronym for action, too. Oh, once, let's hear that one, we, yeah, once we've developed your vision using these um, these tools, then we need to take action. And action is how do we now activate conscious thoughts into um, conscious thoughts into outcomes now? So so many things. Yeah, how because so many things are in our subconscious. So mm -hmm. many things we're unaware of. Even our strengths are subconscious. We know that, yeah, I could do that. Because when people tell you, oh my God, you're so good at this. And you're like, meh. Yeah, you take it for granted. That's you what take I it for granted. It's like, because it's easy for you. Because it's natural. It's easy. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, yeah. But you haven't taken the time to unpack, well, what did I really do that they think is so amazing? Right. What is that? Right. So identifying your strengths is pulling it from the subconscious into conscious, mm -hmm. conscious thought. So now you're consciously activating this. And it's not just uh, moving through doing this stuff, you know, without any, any, uh, awareness that you're actually doing it and, and having success with it. 
Right. And, 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 you know, as you say, when you consciously, when you're aware of, you know, that strength, then you can take it to greater heights because now you know and that. you can develop it. You develop even. it. There's a passion for it. And my daughter was saying to, to me that, you know, if, if <laughs> she was talking about, you know, uh, parenting and saying, if your child loves art, you know, encourage them because they wake up in the morning and they're excited about art as opposed to saying, no, you will be an engineer. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we so need to nurture those, those, um, those interests. Cause even if, cause kids are still trying to find their way. So they might be interested in a billion different things and then drop it. So that was, that was, that was me. I was interested in a lot of things and that's the, that, visionary part of me I was always excited to do the next thing and my mother and father got really frustrated with me because they're like oh but you never finish anything you never finish anything and I was told at five years old that I couldn't do gymnastics because I quit everything but I was very passionate about it and not only was I passionate about it I was good like my PE teacher in, in, I grew up in Australia at the time I was in Australia and my PE teacher was telling, telling them, telling me that I should do gymnastics because I'm tumbling all over the place. She's like, you're running, jumping, tumbling, you're climbing up on stuff. You, you should really, you know, think about doing gymnastics. Your parents should think about putting you in gymnastics. And I remember being all excited and going to my parents saying, I want to do gymnastics. And they're like, no, you quit everything. I'm mm -hmm. like, Looking back at that, I'm like, I was five years old. How many things did I quit? Did I, God, yeah. did I had a reputation for quitting. I mean, <laughs> what was that? So, um, but I understand, you know, like there was money involved and there were other things and they time and money, you know, as a child, you don't understand until you become an adult that there's time and money involved in these things. And so um that was probably more of the why behind it than I quit everything, but mm -hmm. putting it on me made it, made it easier for them. Um, and I have no shade. I'm not throwing any shade at my parents. That's, that's the generation, you know, that's how we grew up. Yep. I was yep. told if I wanted roller skates, prove to me that you could skate before I go buy roller skates for you. Right. So I had to go borrow forward. friends, roller skates and, and, practice and learn how to roller skate. I had to borrow a friend's bicycle and show them I could ride a bike before I could get a bicycle because I quit everything, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they didn't understand how to nurture my strengths. Mm -hmm. All right. So, you know, we're talking now about approaching your vision with confidence. So from what I'm hearing from you is that once your strength, your innate strengths have been identified, then your confidence goes alongside with that. Because now you're able to understand consciously what you are good at. And then you can go out into the world or doing that, whatever it is, with mm -hmm. gusto and with, you know, with a confidence that you are going to get it done because it comes naturally to you. Exactly. When we align people with their subconscious commitments, their, their productivity just goes higher. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's sub this cognitive part of your mind is subconscious until you're aware of it. And when you're aware of it, it's it it's something that you know you're going to do anyway. It's not something like if you're if you're someone whose brain operates in patterns and organizing, we know that you're going to do that anyway. So why not put you in a place or in a role where there's a lot of patterning, there's a lot of process involved. But if your brain does not adapt well to process, in fact, it's quite the opposite. Why would you? We put you in a in a in a position of doing process work every single things that have to be in a process every single day. That's going to frustrate you. And that's there were certain jobs like my brain doesn't work specifically within process. And I remember one of my first jobs was very process oriented. Um, and it was in billing for the electric company back in Trinidad. And so um, every day I had to do the exact same things in the morning. It was the exact thing. And then lunch, go to lunch and then come back. And the afternoon was the exact repeat of the morning. I wanted to pull my hair out. 
Mm. Uh, every day and you know you're like in a room with everybody in their desk and everybody's doing the same thing every day that that was not the space for me when I left that I became a flight attendant Ooh. flight attendant that was even that was that was the space for me because every day was different right every you're jumping different. out you're going on a flight all the passengers every even they even though I was doing the same job as a flight attendant, you're meeting different people. You're getting to interact differently. You're getting to do things differently. You're going to a different country. You know, there was there was a lot of change involved in that. And that really um, fed me. But I didn't understand that that was why. Okay. So now we've identified that, you know, working with your strengths is the best way to approach for success in the world. I mean, so your the tools that you talked about, and you're gonna I know the first one's Colby, second yeah. one. Predictive index. Predictive so Colby index. is K-O-L-B-E, if anybody's okay. looking it up. Colby okay. mm -hmm. and predictive index. Yeah. So now these are the tools that you use to help prospective or clients and businesses and organizations with their and individuals. And, yeah. and individuals, yeah. Um um, figure out what the inner strengths are, correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. And within that comes communication. How do we communicate out of those strengths? Because uh, each person communicates differently based on those strengths as well. And so when we understand that, we can understand why we're having miscommunication or even conflict sometimes with someone. Uh, that's that that's happening over and over again when we measure the strengths and we look at different parts of the strengths and we're like okay this is where that conflict is coming from this is why you're having that conflict and here's how we can work around that okay okay so uh, uh, as you're talking about that I know I've had some guests that have conflict uh, you know resolution resolution yeah now do you work mm -hmm. hand in hand with people like that or or not no, with with people who are con who do conflict resolution. Yes. No, a, a lot of conflict resolution um, experts pro will most likely are handling conflict from the affect. They're handling conflict from a mindset perspective, and giving you the tools to navigate conflict from that perspective. I come from I come at conflict from a different perspective. Not so much from just the affect, from your feelings, from you hurt my feelings, you know, you need to talk differently uh, to me. And not from that aspect, but from from the mind, what's going on in your mind and how innately, because there are just certain innate things that that rub against each other. For instance, like I said, if I'm not process oriented and you are process oriented, anytime there's anything to do with process, we're going to have a problem mm -hmm. because I'm not going to do things the way that you need them done mm -hmm. because my brain just doesn't see process that way. And we're always going to frustrate each other. And when people understand that there's that natural inclination for that frustration, then they can they can consciously right action they can take action consciously to build a bridge between that and say instead of so like someone who in conflict resolution will probably say they'll talk give you tools about hearing one another when you do this this is what it 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 um this is how i feel um and kind of talk it out with each other versus the way I handle conflict when I know there's that natural inclination mm -hmm. for that conflict. And I, sh I show that to both parties, like, because you are this, this is how you see process because you're this, this is how you see process. And you're naturally going to have that, that, um, that friction. So how about this? When you have to do process work and you need them, the person who is not process oriented to do it, give them more time because they need more time to do it. Make it super simple. You can't give them like a, a linear 
20 step process to complete because you do it simply, you know, it's easy for you to do, but you really now have to break that down for them because they're going to jump. Their brain is going to jump, skip over certain things because they just don't see it the same way. So mm. it's not an attack against you. It's not something personal against you. It's just that their brain just doesn't see it that way. And so you have to have a little bit more compassion in helping them through that process. And the person who doesn't do process has to um, also understand, okay, my brain doesn't look at that way. So cognitively now, how can I shift from my cognitive instinct and cognitively build a skill to help me do this process? But again, it has to be done. You have to give them more time to do it and you have to have give them grace when they mess up because mm -hmm. their brain is literally not seeing it the same way. I like that. That's why sometimes conflict resolution can backfire because they say, but they keep doing it. They keep, I, I'm trying to get them to, but they keep doing it. It's because their brain actually doesn't see it the same way that your brain does. I get it now. So they are not addressing the source. You're going They're to not address the source of where that conflict could where be coming, coming from. from right mm -hmm. right exactly um and again no shade to, because it's it's brilliant tools that you can use and it's again bringing conscious awareness affectively em through emotional intelligence how do i deal with this let's take marriage for instance people who are married because we do this work um actually i was thinking of doing something for for valentine's day for couples uh, on this very topic because sometimes they're wired differently. And so you hear couples say, he always, or he's always doing this. And the other couple is saying, yeah, but you never. And when I hear words like that, that it's like, okay, there's probably a wiring difference in there that is tripping, tripping, they're tripping over that they're not aware of. That's the way, you know, we talked about setting up for success. So it's through right. that, uh, that, that we set up a success. deeper understanding of your, how your brain is wired can set you up for greater success in relationships, in your business, in how you handle your kids, um, and, in different, I'd say in every area of your life, in life in general, in life in general, because even yeah. at planning vacations, I have, uh, I talked to this couple and. One is like when they plan vacations, one one of um is is very detailed. They research everything, they have a plan, they have every day mapped out, you know, the schedule of what we're doing every day. And the other, the other one is like, eh, we'll just go with the flow. <laughs> so they're not following your system. And inevitably there is, oh, you know, why can't you just, this is the schedule. Why can't we just stick to the schedule? You just want to go do what you, whatever you want to do. And I have a schedule. And then there's that conflict that's happening oh. without realizing their brain is wired for Definitely. process mm. and information. And the other one's brain is wired for, let's just go there and have fun. Let's just jump in and do, and whatever happens, happens. And so when they have that understanding now that this is what's happening, they get to now design their vacation where each person's need is satisfied. So maybe one day we do everything that you plan to do. And another day we just go with the flow and do it my way. And so everybody's need. And then you can say, you know what? The person who's, who's that process oriented, you book the flights, you take care of all that stuff because I'm, I'm trash when you have to do that kind of stuff. It's like, I, I get airports wrong and I get, because like, I don't have that. Don't that. <laughs> I, my brain just doesn't see that level. It's a lot of mental energy for me to, to dig into that level of detail all the time. So yeah, I get things wrong. And when I do, it's like, okay, it's an adventure. Let's see where we can go from here. <laughs> Let's problem solve our way out of this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love what you're doing. I love, because then, I mean, in that case, Let's take individuals. If we know, if I know exactly how my brain operates and you know how your brain operates, then before we even start on any project, we know how to approach it because 100%. we look at it and we're like, mm, this is too process oriented for me. So you do it. 
Yeah, you take over. You, I know where your role in this project is, and I know what my role in this project. So we have clear lines. We have clarity, clear lines okay. of what my responsibility is and what your responsibility is. And then things don't overlap where, well, I thought you were going to do that. No, I thought you were going to do that mm -hmm. because I understand where my strengths belong and you understand where your strengths belong. And if there's a gap, we find someone to fill that gap. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love what Thank you're you. doing. But you know, we could talk about this forever. I know, forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because it's and, so but I do interesting. Have, I do have that vision workshop, that uh, two-day virtual retreat. If anyone's interested, I know whenever this airs, hopefully it's still, you know, coming up. <laughs> but if not, they could still reach out to me to find out more about how to connect their strengths to their vision and, and to what they want to do. Yeah. And I think this is a good time. I, I'm definitely going to air this because when it's relevant, because we talked about, you know, setting up these um, goals on January 1st and by January 29th, we wouldn't even say 31st. <laughs> it's already been trashed and in the, in, in the bin, like, you know. Time for a new goal. Yes. <laughs> I've got something hard. else for February. That was so, too yeah. hard. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't have to be hard once we understand how we're wired for success. Great. So you're going to be um, doing a two day workshop. When's that going to be? It's March 30th and 30th March. Sorry, January. See, I'm already in March. January in March. 30th and 31st. <laughs> January 30th and 31st. Okay, January 31st. 30th and 31st. Yes, two days, two days, three hours each day. And it's it's 197, which includes the strengths, the cognitive strengths um, assessment. So once you sign up, we'll send you a link to take that cognitive assessment because that's what we're going to work through. We're going to understand those instincts, those instinctive strengths, so that that will help um, help you when we get to the planning side, design that plan. I love it. And and for those who, you know, are probably going to view this after it's passed, how else can they get in touch with you? So they can go to alicia360.com. A L I C I A three six zero dot com. Um, I'm on that platform. They can reach out to me on multiple in multiple ways. They could WhatsApp me. They could text, email. Um, just please, no random phone calls or random video calls <laughs> from social media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't answer random calls, but text me or WhatsApp me. You'll have my email there. You'll also have every social media platform that I'm on, you can link link to me on um, from alicia360.com. If you want to know more either for yourself individually or for your organization, uh, how we can come in and help you identify those strengths, I'll be happy to, to, you know, me and my team will be happy to walk you guys through that. It's just simply amazing. Thank you so much, Alicia. I mean, I've learned so much from just listening to you. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank as you. usual, I say it, chatting with the experts is for women, typically who are from Africa or the Caribbean, who now live abroad or live in Africa and the Caribbean and their offspring. And, and they're Yep. And our goal is always to empower, inspire, and educate women globally. And for me, oh, and can, go ahead. My show too. They can watch my show. Oh, yes. <laughs> you can oh, go subscribe absolutely. to my YouTube channel, Alicia Curry, and watch Unleash Your Audacious Confidence. So, yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, a, I, there's no excuse not to find out more about what you're doing. Because even if you miss the workshop, you're live, you're online. I mean, you're living, you're, you have all these different avenues in which they can find you. Correct. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much, Paula. Absolutely. And for those of you who have enjoyed what you heard, you can reach out to me on my website, which is chattingwiththeexperts.com, or you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Just search for Paula O'Connor. Oh, on Instagram, I, my um, um, handle there is at chat underscore experts underscore podcast, because I'd love to talk with you. Alicia, this has been fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you.